DaVinci Resolve is video editing software, but my burning question, can it be used to edit audio such as recordings like podcasts and voiceovers, and maybe even replace GarageBand or Audacity? Let's dive in and find out. So here we are with a brand new project, and this is the screen we get by default. You'll want to be working only in the Fairlight section of DaVinci Resolve. This is the audio editing section. And as you can see, by default, when we're first into a brand new project, there's nowhere to record, no tracks, nothing you can arm. So how do you start recording? Well, you need to create a timeline, seeing as this is a video-based editor a timeline is what you'll want to create. Now you can either do this by going to the file menu and selecting new timeline, or you'll see it's command or control of your PC and N. And then you just give it a name. Instead of calling it timeline, I'm gonna call it session like that because I'm an audio geek, so session works for me. I can choose if it's gonna be stereo or maybe in the case of a microphone recording mono, definitely want an empty timeline uh, and I actually don't need any video tracks so please don't give me any video tracks. Oh no, not, not that number of video tracks, that's insane. A one is what I have to have by default. So even if you're just recording audio, you still have to add a video track. That might change in the future. Click create, aha, this looks familiar. Okay, we've got audio one, perfect. I can rename it if I want, mic VO, that's helpful. And now I wanna click arm for record, arm for record, arm for record, arm. Why is it not arming for record? You may ask yourself. And the reason is because you've assigned no input yet. So if you're jabbing away on your mouse, trying to arm it to record, and you see it go red for a split second, but it doesn't work, then go over here to your mixer and go to the input. You'll see there's no input. So I need to select there and choose an input. Oh look, I've got a bunch of them. Now you may only have one, because usually you just have one USB mic or audio interface attached. I have lots. Um, I'm using my Universal Audio Thunderbolt, uh, input one, that's fine for me. Patch it through, and that should do the job. Now I can get out of this audio input and output area. I can arm to record and, hello, hello. oh, yes, yes. And, and I can, can hear, hear myself, myself coming back in my headphones. headphones. That's, that's because, because the, the bus, bus is feeding back. back. If you get, get disturbed or distracted by that, by that mute, mute the bus down, down here in the bottom, bottom right. right. Aha, better. And then to record, it's really, really easy. You just hit this big record button right up here. Record, see? Hit it and start speaking. Hello, this is Mike Russell, testing the recording in DaVinci Resolve. I'm in the Fairlight section, and I'm having fun playing with audio effects and making things sound good. So happy I managed to route my input through and get this to work. Just hit stop to stop, and there you go. And uh, if you're like, if you need a bit of a visual here, you can just make it really big, like that. And then of course you can use the, the zoom controls there. This will do the same thing. Uh, you've got this control over here to really zoom in on that waveform uh, to get a level of detail that you might need. And what I think is really cool about working here in Fairlight is you can, you can scrub through fluidly after you've disarmed the recording, of course, and you should be able to hear everything that you've said. So let's play it. I can't hear anything. So why can't I hear anything? Is there any reason why that might be the case? Well, you can look through at everything you've got here and see what is going to your output, and then you'll see that the bus is still muted. Aha. Unmute the bus and boom. Hello, this is Mike Russell. Yes. Testing the recording in DaVinci Resolve. And you can see you've got all your levels up here. You've got a nice loudness meter. It's nice to have that integrated by default and showing you where your levels are in general. So this is really cool. And then I can go ahead and I can add some effects in here. I can work on dynamics so I can switch it off. I don't want to do that, switch it on. Double click it to bring it up and I can set up a brief compressor on this. So let's just set that up uh, as I normally would. Minus 20 maybe three to one compression. This is good, just bump that out of the way a bit, see how it works now. Hello, this is Mike Russell, testing the recording in DaVinci. It even shows me my noise floor down Hello. here, so I can sort of switch on this and make it an expander. This is Mike Russell, or make it a gate to be even more harsh, let's see. Hello, this is Mike Russell, testing the recording in DaVinci Resolve. So it's really good, so we can have a lot of fun with that. And of course, if I forget something and I want to record again, just arm the track to record, no worries, mute out the bus, and then hit record. This is something I forgot to say, so I'm just adding it in later.
There we go. And there's your audio. Bang, straight in. Unmute, Unmute the, the bus, bus and you're back, back to, to listening, listening mode. Or disarm record so you don't get that echo feedback. And all is good. So a brief introduction. Of course, you can do clever edits like this. You can move things around. Finally, remember when you've finished with everything, you should definitely save the project to make sure you preserve the audio file. And then you can save the project or save it as something. And then you'll always be able to come back to any audio you've recorded here and edit it at a later date. However, if you feel like you've done everything and you want to mix this down into a format that someone else can listen back to if they don't have DaVinci Resolve installed, you can just go to the deliver part here on the very right hand side and it's going to give you lots of presets. Now, of course, if you want to go audio only, just select audio here and then you've got all kinds of different codecs. This could be a little more intuitive, linear PCM. What does that mean to you and me? Uh, basically, it's a WAV file. But you can also choose uh, other things such as AAC, and MP3 is quite a popular one there. You've got constant bitrate, which I'd always advise. 320 is the highest quality. But generally, most of you will want to go for that linear PCM, otherwise known as WAV file. You can go 32-bit or lower, and then you simply click to export. And how do you do this? You give it a title, you choose a location, you add it to a render queue and render it out. So we can do that now. We can say, maybe I want to render it in my movies directory and I want to call it, uh, let's see, mic audio. Another very important thing to do is go back to the video section, just untick export video, because since we've got no video to export, the add to render queue was grayed out. Now we're happy with everything we've got there. Uh, we can choose if we want, ah, here we go, here's a wave. That's that's much more understandable now we untick the video, right? Uh, you've also got MP4, MP3, but let's stick with wave. Add to the render queue. There it is. It's going to render out as micaudio.wave in my movies directory. Render, and within seconds, boom, our audio file is ready to use. So there you go. Well, in my opinion, it is a video first app and designed that way. So it's not audio first. It won't take the limelight away from other apps, but it will do a decent job. Some of the effects definitely need more bells and whistles, but maybe in future editions of DaVinci Resolve, we're going to see that in the future. For now, stick with the audio first apps, but this is definitely a great entry point, especially if you're using it for video.